In Algebra 1, we start talking about a topic called domain and range. Um, and we don't do a ton with the domain and the range in Algebra 1, uh, but we will get into more complicated things when you get into Algebra 2. So this will really just be a brief introduction to get your feet wet. Um, if you think this is going to be everything you'll ever learn about domain and range, uh, think again. We're going to do a lot more in Algebra 2. But anyway, a quick introduction. Um, when you're talking about the domain of a function or a relation, uh, the domain is going to deal with all the x values of the function. Okay, so the domain deals with all the x values. The range is going to deal with all the y values. And then finally, the inverse, and again, this is going to be a brief introduction. This is n by no means everything that is uh, comprised of when you're talking about the inverse, is when you're going to switch the ordered pairs around. So we'll just really define this as originally we have our points x, y. Let's say we have the point, you know, 3, 2. If you wanted to take the inverse of that, you would write it as 2, 3. Okay, so um, again, that's a very, very, very brief introduction to the inverse. Here we go. So if we're trying to find the domain for this, uh, these ordered pairs that I have up here, what I'm going to do is I'll just list out all the x values. You don't have to do it this way, but on a multiple choice test, you may see them listed in order from the smallest to the biggest. So I'll list mine that way too. So I've got three. 5 is an x value. The next biggest x value is 6, so I'll do 6, and then 9 would be the next uh, x value there. So we've got four x values, that'll take care of the domain. So a lot of times we label that with like a little d and a colon here, uh, or you write out the word domain. For the range, it's going to be the exact same thing, but now we're going to look at the y values. And again, I'll put these in order here. If you see ever in the domain and the range a repeated value, you typically only write that once. So if we have, see how we have two sevens up here? We have a seven and a seven. We're only gonna write that seven once because we've already included seven in the set of the range. So we're just gonna leave it in there once. We've got eight and 10, and that would be the range of the function, all the possible y values that we're looking at. Finally, if I were to write the inverse for this function, all the ordered pairs, I'm just going to take these ordered pairs and flip-flop the order. So the first ordered pair we would rewrite as 8, 3. The second ordered pair would be 7, 5. The next ordered pair would be 10, 9. And the last one would be 7, 6. Again, that's a very, very brief introduction to domain, range, and also inverses of a function.